Are you tired in fighting fungus gnats around your garden, in your home, around your potted plants? You've tried the hydrogen peroxide trick and it don't work. The yellow sticky traps, well, they can only do so much to keep up. Each adult fungus gnat that escapes can lay up to 300 eggs and the problem quickly scales out of control. Here's the best way that I've found after a lot of hair pulling moments, how you can successfully deal with those little pesky, disgusting critters for good. What's more is that this method is also highly effective against Japanese scarab beetles, root weevils, and many types of fleas, and over 200 other types of pests that develop within your garden soil. What is this mysterious, it sounds way too good to be true method, you might ask? One word, nematodes. To be specific, Steiner nemopheltiae are a type of beneficial parasitic nematode that actively hunt, seek and destroy like cannibalistic crazed butchers harmful garden pests. The great thing about these little microscopic soil dwelling psychotic inquisitors is that they scale to match your infestation. They hunt and track down their prey by sensing the heat and carbon emissions generated by the little heretics. They then enter the pest by any opening available or directly straight through the skin. Once inside, they release a bacterium that kills the pest within a couple of days. They then feed on that carcass, get jiggy with it, and populate and repeat the process all over again. Wonderful. The other thing to note, to set your minds at ease and give you rest is that they are harmless to us and our pets and to beneficial insects like our ladybugs and earthworms. I used them last year within my worm bin because those damp, wet, putrid conditions were just a breeding haven for fruit flies and fungus gnats. In fact, I used it everywhere in all my plants last year because I had a serious fungus gnat infestation. I was at my utter wit's end. I'd spent a fortune in BTI, which is Bacillus thuringiensis, the Israelensis strain, which is commonly sold to treat mosquito larva and fungus gnat larva, and it didn't work. It had lackluster results, and as I used it up and ran out, the problem quickly scaled back and got out of control. It turned into a huge money pit trying to sort out this fungus gnat issue. So the nematodes were my champions that ended my nightmare within a week. And even now within my containers and potted plants, there's likely some of the offspring of those original nematodes still lurking around. Are you guys looking at this giant pile of weeds that I've got in this container right here and thinking, pull your finger out, green thumb. <laughs> what, are you letting, what are you letting all these weeds grow for? Well, I don't believe in being too enthusiastic when weeding your garden. And maybe this is a subject for another time, but these are dandelion or, or part of the dandelion family, should I say. And mm, it's a very nutritious, edible weed. So I don't call it a weed at all, I call it a little blessing. It grows itself with no effort, outperforms my other salads. So we just keep eating it. Mm, delicious. We'll talk about that in the future. So we're gonna be giving a booster application of fresh new nematodes to reinforce the dwindling numbers and population that's probably within my pots. It's winter here and it's even now it's spitting. Uh, it's been raining for the last few weeks and the soil at this time of year tends to stay pretty damp, which becomes a breeding festival for fungus gnats and other fleas. You want to be adding nematodes to your soil when you detect that you've got a pest problem. Either you detect the fungus gnats flying around or you know that you've got a problem with Japanese scarab beetle, root weevils or fleas. You want to be using your nematodes then so that when they do arrive, they arrive and they've got lunch ready for them. Make sure that you order from a reputable dealer who can ship out your little ninja assassins quickly in an insulated package, maybe including a coal pack 
also inside to protect them from any heat and temperature fluctuations. So I've ordered 50 million nematodes. That's enough to cover half an acre of space. That's way too many for me. I ain't got half an acre of potting space on my terrace, but it was the minimum order I could make from a good reputable dealer. I could have ordered less on Amazon, but from what I saw from the reviews, the shipping conditions weren't good and many people complained that when the nematodes arrived, they weren't effective. Maybe they died in transit because the temperatures got too high. Make sure you're buying from a reputable dealer. We wanna be applying these nematodes in these kind of conditions today. It's spitting, it's overcast, the sun is not out. Nematodes are very sensitive to light and heat. We wanna be applying these either very early in the morning or in the night time or on a day like this. We also wanna make sure that when we apply our nematodes that for the next week, we make sure that we keep our soil damp and well watered so that the nematodes can fully establish in the soil. So you wanna be following the instructions on the nematodes that you receive. For me, it's about a teaspoon per gallon. So basically a watering can and I can apply the nematodes directly using the watering can or I can use a pump action sprayer. You can also add your nematodes directly to your irrigation system and water them in that way. So we're gonna open up our nematodes. They come shipped in a, a powder that dissolves with the water. Sometimes they'll come in a sponge that you just squeeze the sponge into your water. But however they come shipped, just look at the instructions and it'll give you a guide on how to, how to use them. So that's our nematodes there, 50 million. I ain't gonna bother counting them to, <laughs> to make sure I'm not getting ripped off. I'll take their word for it. And we're gonna add this teaspoon to our water and give it a good mix in. I always find it easier when mixing up something say like neem oil or in this case, uh, nematodes or over solutions is to mix it up in a smaller container first. So you can mix it up thoroughly and then add it to the larger container and body of water. So I'm gonna add this mixture now to our gallon of water. Give that a mix up with a broom handle because I haven't got anything else available. And then I'm gonna add that to my spray bottle. And I can easily fill this up then from my watering can when I need more. That's it. So now I'm gonna put my pump sprayer on a loose setting so you could tighten it right up to the top and then give it a good turn backwards. So it's, it's coming out as a spray, but a little bit fat so you can get a good coverage on your soil surface. So we'll pump it up and make sure you keep shaking it so that the nematodes remain evenly distributed in the, the liquid. Also, you want to be watering these in. If it isn't raining, once you've applied the little mass murderers. Make sure you give all your plants a good watering so that they can get nicely established. Check out our peach, or should I say apricot tree, how it's come back from that hard pruning we did. In fact, I wanted to do some corrective pruning just to guide it a little bit more, but I didn't have time. I'm just gonna let him do his thing. We'll correct that next year in, in the middle of spring. So I'm gonna repeat this process two more times each week. So next week I'll do this process again, do all my plants exactly how we've just done it now. And then the following week we'll do it one last time. And your nematodes, you can store them in your fridge for about up to three weeks from arrival. Obviously, the longer you keep them in the fridge, the less effective they're going to be. So you wanna be using them as early and as quickly as possible. If you wanna know five more ways how you can control pests organically and naturally within your garden, then we'll make sure that you click on the video that's just popping up 
here. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss any future uploads and be sure to hit that like button to tell YouTube that you dig this content. Also in the future channel memberships will be coming out for those who are interested in supporting the channel that way and the various perks that will be connected along with that. Guys it's been fun catching up with you, I'll see you next time.